Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 200, wow, <laughs> we made it. Yeah, finally here. <laughs> We're going to talk about a new kit amp that's just been born. And in this show, we'll do a quick overview of the preamp. And if you want a more in depth look, drop in on our other channel, Melatone Kits. Charles will put a link on the screen for you. And I'll put one below as well. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. And don't forget that we've got a flash sale. It's going to be running a week only, starts today, and it ends on Thursday. August the 29th, so just before the next episode. And we've got a lot of really great bargains uh, planned. Charles is going to go through them with you at the end of the show. And uh, it's not going to be a discount code. It's just going to be specific vintage tubes, all really highly desirable stuff that we've got good inventory on, and we've discounted them. And best of all, you can take a regular cheers code on top of the sale price. Yep, so you can get a double discount. Yeah, double dip. Anyways, <laughs> what fun. And of course, this is our way of thanking everyone who follows the channel, who makes um, great constructive comments uh, on the episodes and helps keep us on the straight and narrow. <laughs> yeah, and who supports us in our, in our store and in our kid amp business. We can't thank you guys enough. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get started. So... We'll take a little look back on Tube Lab. When I first started the channel, I had a nice little vintage tube business. And I was running it all on my own. And every day I was answering questions from customers from around the world. And I started to notice many of them were identical or really quite similar. And they were often beginner questions. Important questions if you're just starting out in tubes because without the basics, it's really hard to understand the more complex aspects of this fabulous hobby. So the basics was the focus when I started 200 episodes ago, and it still is today. Yes, we do some more challenging topics once in a while, but we still focus on the basics. So skip ahead two years and my little store was now much bigger and I could just barely keep up. Man, I was working six and a half days a week, 10 hours a day. So I asked my son Charles if he'd be interested in joining the fun. And thankfully he said, yes. Yeah. Well, I was, uh, I was running my own little business uh, on the other side of the country, funny enough, and uh, I was ready for a change. So this was, uh, this was a nice move. Well, you were a computer guy. Yep. You were doing software development. You were working on a hardware. You're working on, uh, um, uh, you know, doctor's offices, connectivity. Yeah, and... networking and computers. So it was, uh, it was interesting moving back 100 years technology-wise. <laughs> Well, actually, it's more than 100 years, but yeah, I get your point. Yeah. So, But the interesting thing, too, is um, the challenges uh, that you see in the computer world are, are th there's lots of similarities to, 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 to um, designing tube circuits and yeah. great sounding gear. It, it was actually a surprisingly easy move. Yeah, oh. well, you did, you know, you did great. And together, we've grown Valves and more into a much bigger company. And um, the tube amp business, Mel Melatone Amps, um, last year doubled in size. And we're actually going to have an announcement in the fall that's pretty exciting. Um, and, but I won't say any more right now. But yeah, so it's been great. And, uh, and a lot of it's uh, down to our customers who have been very supportive over the years. Okay, so talking about um, Melatone Amps, that's the topic today. We're going to talk about a brand new preamp design. You might have noticed it already. <laughs> <laughs> now, it looks big on screen, but it's actually, here's my little hands, it's actually quite small. It's about, what, uh, two-thirds the size, maybe even 
less of mm -hmm. our what we're calling our classic line. Yeah, we built it in a more compact chassis, just so it's easier to fit into systems. Yeah, well, the, the interesting thing is last January when we did our year-end planning, we knew we wanted to come up with a new line of more affordable kits that would be easier to build for beginners. That was our focus, is to get the cost down and to make the assembly easier. But little did we know that we would create an amazing sounding preamp that nicely complements our classic line of preamps. And you wouldn't believe the amount of time that it took us to develop this. The brainstorming sessions, trying to figure out problem after problem here to get the cost down while keeping the quality high. It, it took a lot of work, but we're very happy with the results. Well, we basically just finished, this is production, uh, production number one. Mm -hmm. And um, we just literally finished it. So we've been at it for over um, over seven months, yeah. um, working fairly steadily at it. It's pretty typical. It takes at least six months to bring a product to market. From con concept to production version, yeah. Yeah, so, so what are the tubes in here? Is this a mono preamp? No, it's actually a stereo preamp. It's, it's gain stage is a 6N1P, which is a twin triode. So there's two tubes inside of here. The 6N1P is uh, essentially one of those unique Soviet inventions. It really didn't exist anywhere else. There's a similar tube in the West that's not quite the same. And of course, the Chinese made their own copy later on, probably with the help of the Soviets. There's been a lot of economic back and forth with China and and uh, before the Soviet Union and now even with Russia. So this is fairly, what would be the tubes that would be in the ballpark that people would know, the 6DJ8? Yeah, so it's very similar to a 6DJ8 or a 6BZ7, although I would consider it to be better than that. Um, but anything in that sort of high medium uh, amplification factor and uh, general purpose. So a little bit more gain than a common 6SN7 or 12AU7. Yeah, at least 50% more depending on how you've got the amp set up. So what we've done is we put uh, the left channel on one side and the right channel on the other side. And in the cathode follower stage we have the fabulous 6N6P which is just an amazing cathode follower. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, over on our other channel. In fact, um, if if you um, if, if you jump into the other channel, we're going to actually we'll open this up and we'll take uh, a closer look at it. And in a future episode, we'll actually go over the circuit and talk about um, why this probably sounds so great. Right now, we're just doing an overview. So the 6N6P is doing exactly what the 6N1P does. It's got one half is one channel and the other half is the other channel. Makes for a very economical tube selection because for stereo preamp, you only need two tubes. And not only do you only need two tubes, you need two very affordable tubes. And it gets even better than that because if you are into tube rolling, this can roll a lot more than the 6N1P in the gain stage. It can roll the 6DJ8 and all its variations, the um, uh, 6BZ7 or 6BQ7, and some lower gain tubes like the 6N6P. You could put one of these in the gain stage, uh, the 6GU7 and 6CG7 as well. There's a huge variety that you can roll in here and you only need one tube with match sections. And with all those tubes, they go straight in, right? There's yep. no adapter required. There's no biasing, there's no adapter, there's nothing that needs to be done that just pops right in. So not only is this gonna be substantially less expensive than our classic line of uh, kit amps, but the tube inventory is also going to be very affordable. So, and you know, it's a huge problem, I think, for a lot of people is how much vintage tubes cost. And if you are willing to venture a little bit off the beaten path and go with uh, some lesser known tubes, they become much more affordable. So, and you may have noticed that there's a bypass switch on here. And what that is, is a bypass on the, um, on the on the gain stages, the left and right channel, uh, on the cathode resistor, and that that is always for a lot of tube amp designers um, in the preamp stages, anyways, 
It's, that's always been a question, to bypass or not to bypass? <laughs> so bypassing usually gets you more gain, but can make things slightly less linear. Ah, and we're talking about gain. So that's another interesting thing. This has been designed to complement the rest of the line that's coming. And as a result, we needed a high gain preamp. Yep. So with the bypass off, you have about uh, 18 volts or 18, uh, a gain of 18 if so. you've got a, a one volt RMS input, which is typical. Yep. So if you have a little higher gain, uh, input, of course, your gain's going to be a little higher. But with the bypass on, we go up to, I think, almost 28 volts out. Yeah, it's which, a huge amount. Which is incredible. But that what that gives us is the ability to drive um, uh, amps that essentially don't have enough gain in the front end. Mm -hmm. It also has incredibly low output impedance too for, for amps that are hard to drive and have a low input impedance. Well, too. the 6N6P, that's one of the beauties of this tube and probably sonically one of the reasons why this sounds so good. I mean, you're going to put a sound clip over in the other channel, aren't you? Oh yeah, maybe two. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Yeah, so. Well, we actually wanted to show you the front, which has some beautiful gold lettering to, to match. Uh, this is actually Charles's idea. Well, I think I'll actually take some photos and put them up over top here so that people can see. It's just the camera was having trouble focusing. Yeah, it won't. Anything that's got um, a pure white or a pure matte or a pure black surface, it doesn't matter if it doesn't have something. You can notice that actually we have stripes on the front or a textured front and the reason for that is because the camera lens really likes to grab onto stuff like that and it'll stay it'll stay in focus um, but anyways yeah so um, this was just a quick drop in to talk a little bit about this circuit and if you're a little bit more interested uh, drop in on the other channel and we'll do a little bit more in-depth look we're going to actually take the back off and we'll take a look at that and see how uh, simple and easy it is to to assemble. Okay, Charles, you spent the whole morning, in fact, we spent weeks now looking for vintage tubes that we've got good inventory on that we can put put on sale. Put on sale. So let's let's start showing those off. All right, let's clear the deck and uh, we'll get them out here. Okay, so we're going to start off here first with a whole bunch of preamp or voltage gain tubes. And to start off the batch, we've got these beautiful RCA 12AU7 clear tops. And these are some of the nicest 12AU7s ever made. Certainly the best uh, ever made in North America. And um, uh, the, the RCA... Um, made a lot of these tubes and luckily um, we had we we found a supplier who had uh, flights of them uh, mm -hmm. sleeves and um, and we bought up everything he had so and we still have some of that stock left and the beauty of finding um, finding tubes new in the case or new in the sleeve is that generally speaking they haven't been picked over yet and they almost always have very good testing numbers. Because that's something you got to really watch out for these days. A lot of what's left in inventory are basically the dregs. They've been picked over by technicians and rejected and rejected. And, um, you know, probably sold off cheap at some point. Mm -hmm. So testing numbers are absolutely critical. Yeah, so they're on sale. And another one that we managed to find some sleeves of are these beautiful Sylvania and Phillips labeled. 6922s. These were all made by Sylvania. It's one of the later versions that they made. Yeah, they were made in the last uh, couple of years of the second tube era before um, uh, Phillips closed down the, pretty much the last of the plants. Mm -hmm. And these are just fantastic 6922s. We've got some great matched pairs of them. And this is actually something that I thought I had added in the store a while ago, but I found out today that I hadn't. Whoop. Oops. I'm okay, just... Dad's knocking stuff off the desk. Well, test equipment, no less. <laughs> this is a, an RCA 6SN7 GTB, and this is the short bottle with the side getter. And these are very similar to the GE tubes that were made around the same time, but RCA liked to have this offset plate structure and black plates where GE did gray plates. And these were made in both the US and Canada, just like the tall bottle version of the RCA. So we have both. 
and they're great sounding RCA tubes. Uh, I'm a little upset that I didn't get them in the store sooner because we have a whole bunch of them and they're beautifully matched. So we're hoping to get them into your hands here. Well, the good news is we've got all that inventory that nobody bought. So. <laughs> yeah, well, well, now we can sell it. <laughs> nobody, nobody knew it existed. And the lovely thing about RCA 6S and 7s is that it, you have a, a very unique sound. A lot of tube manufacturers had sort of their, their own house house sound yep and rca tended to have a warm kind of a buttery rich sound yeah especially in the mid-range i believe they're known for and uh so they're great tubes and we've got a whole bunch of them and they're beautifully matched and over here we actually have a quad set so we'll take a look at one type at a time well this is a freya set yeah, yeah? so this is for a freya plus which takes four 6 sn7s and these are New Old Stock Sylvania GTBs. And these are fantastic tubes. They're rock solid, they're reliable. They've got that Sylvania house sound, just like we were describing with the RCA having its own house sound. And we have a whole bunch of these that are New Old Stock and ready to go out the door. And they're just great preamp tubes. Yeah, I mean, Sylvania has a house sound that is very balanced. So not only does it have a warm, do they have a warm, rich mid-range, but they also have excellent detail. Yeah. And to complement them are, is one of our favorite cathode follower 6 sn 7 tubes, the GE. Just like I was talking about with the RCA, it's a short bottle with a side getter, but with a different plate coating on them. And these are reliable. They also sound great in the preamp stage, but they are fantastic cathode follower tubes. And these are going to complement the Sylvanias really quite nicely. So we've got that set, whole set on sale for Freya owners. And we've got a whole bunch of power tubes to show off too. So let's clear the deck and we'll get those on screen. Okay, actually, before we get into the big pile of power tubes, we're going to look at one sort of oddball here and one rectifier. So this, of course, is a Toshiba 6080, also known as the 6AS7, although the 6AS7 had a bottle that was more like this, the Coke bottle shape or ST bottle. And these are were these started their lives as series pass tubes or regulator tubes and power supplies and they've found a new home and a new life in OTL lamps. They are dual high power triodes and Toshiba made some fantastic versions of these that are very tight testing and very high testing. Yeah, we're really big on um, on Toshiba uh, tubes. The, the manufacturing is absolutely superb and we've been really lucky that we've been able to find a number of them, new old stock, new in the box. Yeah, very nice looking boxes too. Yeah, that's one of the differences when, uh, when we find um, uh, surplus Japanese inventory, um, the uh, the tube boxes are often looked after properly. Yeah, Whereas they tend to be in better condition. If we find surplus uh, Soviet era tube boxes, <laughs> well, we've well, got Well, this one. is about the best we'll look at. <laughs> we've got a rusty we'll staple and yeah, I mean, that they were not storing tubes in um, uh, uh, climate controlled warehouses. Yeah, well, this is actually really nice compared to most of them that we find. They've yeah. got great padding in there. This is thick. That's hard a, stock. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, thankfully it was good because it protected these absolutely beautiful rectifiers here. These were made by Svetlana, one of our favorite tube manufacturers from the Soviet Union. And this is the 5U3C. It's not technically a U. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in Cyrillic, but this is the equivalent of a 5U4G rectifier. And they're just great tubes. Look at that beautiful gettering on there. This one was made in 1979, so it's one of the later productions, but they did make them, I think, into the 90s even. Yeah, now we have to put one note of caution. Um, even though this is electrically uh, identical to the 5U4G, uh, that's the North American tube, there are some modern Chinese amps in which they have they haven't built their power supplies properly, and um, uh, some of the vintage 5U4s will arc on startup. Yeah, not just these guys, but other 5U4s as well. Yeah, so, and it's a it's a problem that we see with a lot of modern amps that the, even, even though they uh, use a traditional vintage tube, they actually don't test them with the vintage tubes. They test them with modern production. And a lot of modern production tubes are off spec. 
And the Chinese have a habit of making over spec versions. <laughs> and then, of course, they test their equipment on them, and uh, consumers who want to put better quality tubes in get a shock when they, well, mm. When their tubes arc. So yeah, well it's the same idea as using a, a vintage 6SN7 or 12SN7 GT model in an amp that's meant for a GTA or GTB. It's just not a good idea. You can damage the tube and uh, you know yeah. you don't want to ruin a nice vintage tube. Okay well right. you've got a lot of power tubes. Let's keep rolling. Yep. Okay so now we've got a whole bunch of power tubes here made by the same manufacturer. Reflector, another great Soviet manufacturer. And these are the 6P, 14P dash EVs. And what these are are EL84s. Not just any EL84, these are actually the Soviet equivalent of the much higher spec and better rated 7189, which if anybody is using EL84s out there knows, are really hard to find the American manufactured versions of those tubes. Yeah, we had some Western 7189s in the store uh, years ago and they just sell basically instantly. Yep, and so these are fantastic EL84s. They tested beautifully. We've got a bunch of really tight match quads and uh, and they're ready to go out there. And, and they're very, great they were very affordable before we put them on sale. So, yep. so let's, and talking about a, a very affordable power tube, you've got a 6L6 equivalent. Yeah, so this is the uh, 6P3C-E, and these are 6L6s. They're equivalent roughly to the 6L6GB, which is sort of the mid-range version in terms of power. And uh, these are, are really nice tubes. Another one that's very tight matched. They're, they're chrome, their gathering is great. They came bulk packed, and they have these nice coin bases on Yeah, them. and when I designed um, my first uh, monoblock for our own home system years ago, this is actually uh, the tube I based it on, and they are great sounding tubes. Um, just a very clean, fast sound. Um, fairly neutral, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, and rock solid. I never actually burnt one out. Yep. Um, so, And we've got some beautiful tight match quads of these in there as well so they're ready to go and the, they should drop into just about any 6L6 slot that's out there. And you kept the best to last. Yeah okay let's clear the deck and we'll be right back. Okay and last but not least uh, we've already shown these guys off to you last week. We got in this beautiful pile of national branded RFT EL34. It's also called the 6CA7 and uh, we were lucky enough to find a whole bunch that were new old stock, new, new in the box, box, and new in the sleeve, yeah. which, you know, is almost unheard of for EL34s, for vintage quality ones these days. And um, the big news with these is that we are discounting them fairly heavily. We're taking $100 off for this sale. For the quad. For the quad, plus you can get the, Your... the extra coupon code on top of it. Yeah. And uh, so we've got a, a bunch that are beautiful match labels with these national labels on them. We have ones that are branded uh, for other brands that didn't come in with this lot. But yeah. um, the first orders that go out will all go out uh, probably with an with the match national yeah unions unless and, if and you the match production message bosses. us and let us know you want something else because we do have a, a bunch of the other ones that RFT rebranded to yeah it's just almost because re RFT rebranded EL 34s for basically everyone who wanted uh, every retailer and manufacturer who wanted tubes particularly Siemens but mm -hmm. almost everybody else um, you find them rebranded for everything. <laughs> the, the, it's almost impossible to get a match quad all with match labels. That's why it's so nice to see, even though it's rebranded national, it's nice to see that we can get, and you know, this is all the same production run as well, which is even nicer. Yep. Um, so yeah, so that's a big thing. So if you've been looking for some great vintage EL34s to put in your amp, and now's the time. They're on sale. They're some of the best that you can get these days, and uh, I think you'll really like them. Yeah, and they're testing over spec. So yep. Which so is, they're going to last a long time. Yeah, that's great. Okay, well, thanks for spending some time to go through our inventory, charge. Charles. That was a big job. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, don't forget, we're going to put the links in below for the other channel for the video taking a closer look at the new preamp. So if you want to pop over there, you can follow up with us. And if you stay to the very end, here's some cheers codes to help you out. There is a secret code that's pretty easy to figure out. 
And there's actually a huge cheers code for only two people who have ever guessed it uh, for really large purchases. It's pretty easy to figure out though, if you think about it. We can reach almost everybody around the world with flat rate $20 shipping, but if you're in a difficult to ship region, please contact us before ordering. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping is on us, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Cheers, everyone.